strip transmission lines and uh, based on this uh, micro strip transmission line clip uh, there is a class assignment associated with it and that is class assignment number as we can see on the grid distribution we have class assignment 6 and class assignment 7 so class assignment 6 will be related to this lecture so you have to watch this lecture and design of a transmission line we have to we have to implement it and then this design uh, will be uh, implemented uh, in NSOFT and the results will be shared to the, the, the small assignment. So let us uh, go through this lecture first. Uh, what is a micro transmission line. Uh, you know that uh, in microengineering, uh, there are, in order to transmit a signal from one place to another, uh, we need transmission lines. So until now in the theory we have discussed the equations and uh, voltages, currents, characteristic impedance, all those were related to ideal transmission line. But in reality, the transmission lines, you know, nothing is ideal, so we have to use the transmission lines which are actually available. And there are many types of transmission lines, for example, the coaxial cables which we usually use uh, in satellite systems in our homes. And uh, the micro, my, this is called the coaxial cables. And another type of micro, another type of micro transmission line which is micro strip. And if you open up any de any device like Wi-Fi, your modem or mo mobile, inside you will find these micro strip transmission lines. <coughs> so, we most of the most of the devices these days are dependent on the micro strip transmission line. So, um, these are the some of the examples of the coaxial cable. You you will find these satellite systems. Transmission lines are mostly used in modern day microwave communications. They are easy to connect, more flexible integration with equipment and printed circuit. Examples are coaxial cables. So these coaxial cables are, uh, you, you will find them on the uh, on the base stations of mobile. If you go to any uh, site which has mobile equipment, you will find these a lot. Now, microstrip transmission line. These are the coaxial cables. So, microstrip transmission lines are of this type. They are uh, mostly used in integrated circuits. They are easy to design and fabricate. Uh, and the reason for this is there is only one line. Uh, there are no, uh, it's one line is connected to the components, and the second line is the common ground plane. So, that microstrip transmission line looks like this. There is a common ground plane, and then there is uh, microstrip these lines of width W which go from one point to the another to the in the circuit. Now for example in this circuit this is the top line one of the lines of the, trans of the two transmission because in order for a voltage to, to pro propagate we need two conductors. So the first conductor is on top and the second conductor does not have to look like this is just a ground plane like that. So this is an advantage of microstrip that we just need to uh, to connect one line to the components on the board. So these are all you can see the example of microstrip. Uh, if you open an, a, a mobile we can also find these lines inside. So uh, now the microstrip is printed on a dielectric like this. So there is a dielectric constant epsilon r. One side is ground. The, the height uh, of the substrate, this is called substrate. The height of this dielectric substrate is h and the width of the transmission line is w and the length is l. And all these are dependent on the transmission, on the impedance and the, the, the angle of the Base of the transmission line and all that. And we will do it in the next few slides. 
what uh, what are the dif differences between the parameters of an ideal transmission line and a microstrip transmission line this is on the left hand side is some of the parameters of the some of the important parameters of the ideal transmission lines which, which include the velocity the wave length the propagation constant beta and the impedance z naught <coughs> the voltage and current equations are related uh, by these and the, the wavelength is the velocity divided by f if the velocity is the free space it is c uh, so the velocity is equal to f lambda and that is equal to 1 over square root lc and l and c are the lumped element the inductance and capacitance of the transmission line for details we can look at the previous lectures on the website the propagation constant is given by omega divided by u. And omega is equal to 2 pi f. u is f lambda as we can see there. So this f cancels and we get another relation of beta which is 2 pi over f lambda. z naught is equal to square root L over c for this ideal transmission line. Now the microstrip transmission line will also have the similar equations. The only difference is uh, the, these parameters epsilon r direct constant W which is the width of the microstrip they all change the velocity of the propagation so the velocity is now u over f where u is equal to c over epsilon effective so there is a small mistake here this should be there should be an f here So u is equal to c over epsilon effective square root f and velocity is equal to u which is equal to f lambda. Beta is equal to omega over u and 2 pi over f divided by f lambda and 2 pi over lambda. So the only difference is the wavelength which affects uh, the wavelength and the velocity which affects the beta and z naught uh, is the impedance which depends on w and uh, height w and h of the microstrip and we will uh, look at the relations in the next slide <coughs> now what are the epsilon effective and, uh, and uh, characteristic of the transmission line they, they, we have the after uh, you know there are some uh, studies which have been done in the last 70 80 years and from there we there there was a relation which was found for epsilon effective of the microstrip transmission line and that is epsilon r plus 1 divided by 2 plus epsilon r minus 1 divided by 2 multiplied by 1 over 1 plus 12 h over w h is the height of the substrate and w is the width of the transmission line the characteristic impedance is given by these two formulas if W over H, so if the width divided by H is less than 1, then we use this rule. And if W over H is greater than 1, then, then we use this rule to find the characteristic of the transmission. Uh, uh, there is another way of finding the these two uh, parameters, and this is through the uh, calculators, which are available in some programs, and they are, it's also available on internet. For example, this site has this... Uh, calculator in which we can put these values epsilon r h and frequency and we can find the z naught uh, and we can also put z naught and uh, electrical length to find width and length of the term or if, if we can if you put w and l we can find z naught and theta so we can use these online calculators to find some of these parameters now let us look at an example of designing a 50 ohm ideal and microstrip transmission line of 60 degrees electrical length at frequency of 1.5 gigahertz. Show ends of simulations. For microstrip, assume epsilon r equal to 4 and h equal to 1.5 millimeters. 
So for an ideal transmission line, first of all, let us design it for a, this is, we have, we have done it one of the class assignments. Let us do it once again. Theta, which is the phase of the transmission line is 60 degrees and the frequency is 1.5 degrees. Now we know that theta equal to beta D. Therefore, D is equal to theta over beta B, which is the length of the transmission line is equal to the, 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 the degrees, the, the phase angle in radians divided by beta. Now what is beta? Beta is equal to omega by C, assuming free space velocity, so 2 pi f over C and this comes out to be 31.41 for 1.5 gigahertz. If you change the frequency, this will change and if you change the speed, this will also change. So, but here we are assuming free space velocity, so this comes out to be 31.415. Now D equal to theta over B, beta, so we change theta into degrees which is pi multiplied by 60. Actually, it's not 2 pi, it should be 4 pi. There is another mistake here. So I can just change it to pi. So pi multiplied by 60 divided by 180 divided by 1 over divided by 3 31.41. This out comes out to be 66.7 millimeters. And for microstrip, I can just put it into the online calculator. I have 60 degrees and 50 ohm and 1.5 frequency and I have epsilon r 4 and h equal to 1.5. So I, if I put all these parameters, this comes out to be, so that the width comes out to be 3.07 millimeter and length comes out to be 19 millimeters. So now let us go to NSOFT and design. I did it once before and I got these two circuits for the ideal transmission and the microstrip. And as you can see here is that the magnitude is 1 for both. Looking at the scale, we can see that the magnitude is 1. S21 magnitude is 1. And S21 phase is almost same for the two transmission lines. One is ideal and one is the equivalent microstrip transmission line of 60 degrees. One thing we can notice that the ideal transmission line, the length is 33.33 millimeters, which produces a phase of 60 degrees. For the same phase, the length of the microstrip is less than the length of the uh, ideal transmission line. This is because the velocity of the microstrip is more, sorry, the velocity is less. So if the velocity is less, beta is more and we need less length to have the same phase. So as we can see that at 1.5 degrees, the phase is exactly 60 degrees, almost exactly 60 degrees. So our design is correct. Now let us uh, go to NSOFT and I will show you how to design this circuit once again. So let me uh, just start another project like this. Project 8. And I, I insert a circuit and I just say open and then I can go to this uh, circuit and put the so what I can do is I need I need an ideal transmission line so I go to the to the components and I go to the uh, the ideal distributed here and I pick one which we picked before which is the transmission line with the physical length TRLK I put it here uh, now the angle here as we can we designed the angle was <coughs> the length was 66.7 so I go back here and I put 66.7 millimeters the other ones are correct and and the impedance is 50 ohm is because it is there in the question, the impedance is 50 ohm. So I go back here and I put the nodes, this one, port, and I double click and I change it to microwave. This is my first port and I copy paste this port. second port and I go to the project
check once again. Um, so this is my circuit. So I go to the Analysis and then add, add solution setup. Next, <coughs> I'm gonna add. So I add from 0.5 to 1.5 to 2, and I just have 0 0.01 increment. Say OK. Finish, and then I analyze it. So once the analysis is complete, I can add the create report. Okay. I need S21 magnitude. Add. This is S21 magnitude, which is 1 all over from 0.5 to 2 gigahertz. And I also need phase. So I create another report. Go to S21 phase angle and add trace and done. So as I can see from one at 1 1.5 it is one minus 125 which is not correct. So there is something wrong in the definition. So let us go here again to the circuit. 66.7 millimeters. This is wrong here. It should be uh, pi multiple. So it should be if you calculate this, this is actually 33.3 millimeters. So there is another mistake here. So I just go here and I change it to 33.3 and say OK. Save it and then run it again. This comes out to be at 125, at 1.5 it is almost minus 60 degrees. So this is the correct <coughs> solution. Now I go, I, I have to add another one uh, because I, I need to compare this with the microstrip. Uh, so I go to the components and I go to the microstrip here. And I go to the transmission lines. So I have microstrip transmission line physical length. This one, the first one. So I just put it here. It will give me this. I just say merge layers and I put it here. So this gives me a W and a P. So as you can see here is uh, W is 3 and P is almost 19. And epsilon r is for the substrate. So the next, so I just double click here. I double click here and I, I will see the substrate is FR4. So I can change this substrate. I just click here and I just put new. And I can put uh, epsilon 4 substrate. So I just, I just name it epsilon 4. The height is 1.5 millimeter as given and epsilon is 4. So I just say OK and I say OK. So now this is changed to epsilon 4. I can double click here and see the properties. So 1.4, 4, so this is OK. I say OK. TRL, so I just go to width which is 3.07 as calculated from the online calculator and the length is 19.01 19.01 say ok and now I can put just copy the ports here so this is the port 3 and also I can copy the fourth port here so 
so now I have these two circuits I can go to the project and I can run it again and in the report I can add a modify report and I can add one more here so I can add 3 4 3 4 magnitude add like this and so I can see that it is almost one throughout and I can also add I can go to the other one and add the angle 3 4 3 4 angle add done so I can see here that 1.5 I, I get minus 60 degrees again so it means that my design was correct I can save this design and so I This is the results for this. Now, I, in the class assignment, I will give you a similar, a similar problem, but with a different frequency for everybody. And that frequency will be depending, depending on your student ID. So please just go. Uh, it will not take much time. So please do that and submit it before the midterm on <coughs> Thursday. And then uh, the midterm.